Hello there. Today, we're going to talk about programming your Theta Servo, programming parameters, and give you some information on how to go about making changes to the servo itself. The servos have a technology called NFC, which stands for Near Field Communication. NFC is in most Android phones, not the lower end ones, usually the higher end phones. So if you tap the back of the servo with the back of an Android phone that supports NFC, you can change settings in the servo. Correct. So do you have to program your Theta servo? Not at all. I would argue not. No. You don't have to. So if you do not have a NFC capable Android phone, do not worry about it. Mm -hmm. No need to program. Does it make life easier? Does it help you with uh, customizing the way the servo feels or what you want to accomplish with the servo? Yes, of course it does, but it's not essential. It's important to note that uh, Apple phones also have NFC, but because of the nature of Apple, Apple software, developers cannot tap into that NFC capability to use it to program devices, uh, servos and, and other things that are NF NFC enabled. So for now, you do have to have a Android based device that is NFC capable. Mm -hmm. However, we're hearing there are plans and rumors of a programming box or a Bluetooth programmer of some sorts for iPhone users or just anyone without any sort of yeah. device they want to use to program. Some sort of program box so that you just plug in your servo or you tap it or whatever it is going to be and then that allows everybody to do it whether you have an Android phone or not. Yeah. We don't have ETA, we don't know if it's going to happen or when it's going to happen, but that's encouraging news. So before we show you how to program, why, yeah. why, why, are we why programming? programming? Yeah. Yes. So some of the settings you can change is like the response time. So if you feel the servo is a little bit slow off center, you can change something called the current value, which increases the overall response time of the servo, which is something you and I have played with. Correct, correct. So there's a lot of things you can change. Doesn't mean you want to change them or you need to change them. In fact, uh, we highly recommend not changing a lot of this stuff because it can break it can break the servo in the sense that you're going to make the servo so uh, uncontrollable or perhaps. Um, you're going to cause the servo to like jitter or vibrate or do other things you don't want to do. So we're going to walk you through the most important things that you can um, change to make the servo, I guess you could say higher performing. Yeah, to match, match your flying to style. To match your flying style as well. Yeah. yeah. So first thing you do is you download the app. Again, you have to have an Android phone. Mm -hmm. Download the app from fasttech.cc. You'll see the URL here on the screen. Once you get there, click on downloads and find the app. You're going to have to install that app on your Android phone, of course, and launch the app. After you launch the app, it's going to ask you for an invitation code. You'll find that code here on the screen as well. You have to enter that in order for it to give you access to the app itself. Once you're there um, and you're able to launch the app and it's all good to go, then you simply need a servo, of course, and then you need to tap <laughs> the servo. And here's how you do it. All right, guys. So basically, take your phone and launch the app. Um, when you launch the app, you're going to see a screen um, that basically just promotes their products and it shows you news um, about helicopters, airplanes, like cars, buggies, and things like that. So you have to click on parameter. And when you click on parameter, it's going to say ready to read data. So you take a servo, um, obviously it has to be an NFC programmable theta, which most of them are. Keep in mind, some of the minis, um, THM series, I believe, and the micros are not. So you have to have one that's NFC capable. So you take your servo and you're gonna tap the servo on your screen. And then it's gonna say read success. Um, sometimes you'll see that it says login servo and that's because the servo has never been entered into the system. So when you see login servo, click okay. And then it'll ask you to tap it one more time. And again, this only happens the first time you've ever read a servo or programmed the servo before. So once you tap it, It'll say login success and it'll give you all the parameters. From top to bottom, as you look at all these uh, parameters, the first thing you see is the number of updates, the type of servo model, the serial number of the servo, um, how many times it's been updated versus updates. You can see this is a brand new servo, it says zero times. And then it tells you how many times it's been used, um, how many times it's been booted up. Then below that you have heli, acro, buggy, and drift. Of course, you're gonna ignore the last three, you're gonna leave it on heli. And below that, you have all these options that are quite interesting. You have reverse, so you can reverse the servo uh, rotation. I don't see why you would want to do that because you can do that from within your flight controller. But 
it's a good option to have. The narrow band, so you have that also on tail servos to where you can change it to the regular band. So this is a cyclic servo, so it's 1520 pulse. So if you hit narrow band, you can change it to a 760 pulse, which would make a cyclic servo compatible with the new Futaba system and, and, and other things like that. Um, and then as you hover over, over uh, these options, you're gonna see that you have like um, a little description down below. So if you go, for example, for where it says accurate and you click that, click that it says that it, it improves the accuracy under heavy loads. We haven't played with that yet. We also haven't played with a smooth setting, which according to this, it just makes this, the actual uh, uh, servo movement uh, a little bit smoother, but it also slows down the response. Um, and then the Sanwa uh, SSR, you can ignore that. That's for RC car guys that, that have uh, slightly different technology on their receivers. So as we move down, Kyle, you want to talk about neutral? Uh, so what would you use neutral for? Neutral is basically the center point of the servo. I think the biggest benefit for helicopters is going to be on the tail rotor servo because in most fly brawlers units, there is no sub trim for the tail rotor servo. And if your geometry is not quite right, you can adjust the center point of the tail servo itself. Yeah. Another nice it, benefit is, is over time with gear wear, you can change the center point of your cyclic servos so that your gear mesh is always nice and tight and, and crisp feeling. Yeah, exactly. Some people actually change the neutral point so that they can leave their flight controller at, at zero sub trim. I think that's overkill because it's not a very easy thing to change in the sense that in order to read and write onto the servo, the servo needs to be powered off. So you would have to read, make a change, write, and then power on and check and then repeat and repeat multiple times. So there's really no reason to ignore to not use your flight controller uh, sub trim considering that the servo movement range is wider than that. The PWM rate, the servo, imp servo range of movement is wider, is bigger um, than, than that of the flight controller. So using sub trim is perfectly acceptable, but every so often, every 1500 flights, you can come in here, like Al said, change the neutral point, uh, move it a little bit to the right or the left, and then go back into your flight controller and redo the sub trim. And what that did is that basically changed the location of your spline, your, your gears, making them, allowing them to last longer with l less slop, right? So as we move down, we have the P and the D. Um, we're really not gonna get into that. Again, you can hover over those settings and you can see what they do. Kyle and I increase both. We're gonna post more about that later. We recommend that you're very careful if you're making a change, make a very small and subtle change. Then you have the dead zone, which you really don't need to mess with. It basically just changes the, the gain, the precision of the gain. It's sort of like a, a dead, dead band dead type band of thing, zone, yeah. yeah. And then you have your input PWM, um, which is basically like what the servo is willing to accept from a flight controller or a receiver, and, and, uh, and I think is, is measured in the US, which is microseconds. Then you have the output, the output angle, which is in degrees. Again, these things are things that you shouldn't really be messing with. There's absolutely no reason to. Don't you agree, Kyle? Totally agree. Um, and then the soft start, uh, it's a pretty cool feature. Uh, the servo has a soft start feature. You can increase it or decrease it. Mm -hmm. And then the current, that's the important one, right? Yeah, current is the one that Bert and I have messed with the most. This changes, this is probably the most powerful feature in the servo to change how it feels. If you raise the max current, the servo is going to respond and accelerate much faster. However, you do have to be careful. Uh, it's kind of based around the power system you use in your helicopter. If you use too much of a max current on the servo, you know, you're, if your BEC is not strong enough, you could brown out the fly brush unit. However, we've been testing with not only receiver packs as well as hobby wing BECs and have not had any issues, even maxing it all the way out. Yeah, Colin and I have tried it with the... The, the Hobby Wing 200 ESC and I believe the 130, I'm not so sure, but uh, we've gone as high as six amps, mm -hmm. which is a little exaggerated. So use this with caution. The stock setting works. If you want more performance, go up a little bit, um, maybe a, a, an amp at a time and try not to go, ex not to exceed four to five amps just to be on the safe side. And then startup power, you can read there if you want to. And then uh, the overload current and the overload time. Uh, you can read about it. I encourage you not to touch that. There's absolutely no reason to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you keep moving down, eventually you get to uh, where it says restore factory settings or restore factory settings and log off. It's basically the same thing. It's one of the same. Um, that's if you made some changes, you wrote them on the servo, you're all concerned, you don't remember where you started. You simply click on restore fa factory settings and then rewrite those to the servo. 
when you're ready to, when you're done making your changes, then what you do is you click on the second icon um, up top and it'll say for right, please take servo bottom cap to your mobile device um, or mobile NFC. So that's how you write onto the servo. And then other than that, um, you, have, you have the ability to save a file. So the very last icon that looks like a, an old hard drive or floppy disk, it'll prompt you to enter a file name for dump. So you can call it, you know, test number one or whatever you want to, or best so far, or whatever you want to call it and save it. And then you can retrieve it by clicking on the first icon, which prompts you to select the dump that you want to use. Um, I think that's the most relevant stuff out of all this. You have a share where you see the three dots up top, so you can share it with somebody. Um, is there anything else you, else you can think of, Kyle? No, just, I think it's what Bert touched on this, but I think it's important that when you change settings to one servo, you should always save it to the hard drive on the phone so you can dump it easily. Don't try and remember, I think I had current at three or this, no. Just save it every time you make a, a change so you can dump it to the rest of the servos and have same settings across the board. Because if you try and fly with servos with different settings, you're gonna have a bad time. Exactly. Once again, to, uh, to write the settings onto your servo, say for example, I changed my neutral here all the way up to 4.8, which is a drastic change. I just hit that button right there and it'll say for right, please take servo bottom cap to your mobile NFC. And you just basically tap the servo and it'll say write success. And how do you know that it was written successfully? You simply read it again. So sometimes you have to kind of exit back to the main screen, click on parameter and then read. So you read it again, and after you read it, then you should confirm that you've is reading the new setting right there. And again, if you want to save it, just click right there on the save button, and you call it like I don't know one one one, okay? And now that should show up in the list of dumps, and you can see that there's a dump one 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 that is prompting me for. Um, again, to restore factory settings, you read again. You wait until it reads all the way. And then you scroll all the way down, restore factory settings. To restore settings, please take servo bottom cap to your mobile NFC, put it right there. Restore factory settings success. And again, if you're ever in doubt that it took the changes, simply read the servo again. And as you can see now, my neutral is a zero, whereas I have moved it way up, so. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two about programming your new Theta servos. Thanks for watching once again.